my name is Colin Greatwood. I'm a part of the Mechatronics Technology Engineering team here at Festo, and today I'll be showing you how to set up a Festo CDPX as a remote target visualization HMI for a CPX-CEC Festo Code Assist controller. As you can see from this hardware overview, I have a CACN120 single phase VACN to 24 VDC out power supply, a Festo Code Assist com controller CPX-CEC-C1-V3, and a CDPX HMI, the E1 variant with Codesys embedded. Now I'll start my setup by launching Codesys. Before starting my project, I'll go to my Tools menu, Package Manager, and verify that I have the appropriate CPX-CEC package installed. The one I'm using here is 3516169. Now I'll start a new project select CPX-CEC project, and I'll name this project RTV test three. Once it's started, I'll select the appropriate version from my device dropdown, CPX-CEC-C1-V3. I'll be using 35737 today. Ladder logic for my PRG. And I don't need a can open mask manager for what I'm setting up. Once my project has been created, I'll select my application, click Add Object from the pop up, and add a visualization manager. Once the visualization manager has been added, you can see that I have no visualizations. So my next step will be to add a remote target visualization object. Once the remote target visualization has been added, I'll single click my application again and add a visualization. For today's test, I'll add a simple rectangle with some text in it. There, now that I have my visualization test screen set up, I'll go back to remote target visualization. From that project, select the visualization we just created and then go back to Visualization Manager and verify that the visualization we have set up for remote target visualization is enabled, as shown here. Lastly, I'll double click on my PLC device and then establish my communication pathway. Once that's been established, I'll rebuild my project wait for no errors, create a boot application, and then log in with download. Great, now the Codesys side of things has been completed. I'll file and save my project. The last thing I need to do before moving over to the HMI, is I'll open Windows File Explorer and navigate to this subfolder, the C drive, Program Files 86, Festo, Designer Studio 4.5, and the Application subfolder. Designer Studio 4.5 has to be installed prior to executing this. Within the Application subfolder, there is a zip folder titled Codesys RTV 3.5.17.0-3-linux-arm.zip. I'll copy that zip folder in its zip state to a USB drive. You can see I have one plugged in here. I'll paste it to the USB drive and leave it in its zip state and extract or eject the USB drive. Now that I've removed the USB from my PC, I'll move over to my HMI view. From my HMI view, you can see that I have a factory restored HMI. Empty boot sequence is shown on the center of the screen. ETH 0192.168.0.1 is displayed at the bottom of the screen, and I have system settings and startup sequence buttons in the top left. I'll first click system settings.
Since this is the first time I've logged into this factory restored HMI, I'm prompted to change the password for user user. I'll do that here quickly. I get a message that the password for user user was successfully changed and I'll acknowledge it. Then I'll get another prompt to choose a password for user admin. I'll add that password twice now. Now that I've got that typed in twice, I'll click change password. Once it says successfully changed, the system HMI will reboot. Once it's rebooted, I'll click system settings and log in as an admin user. I'll press OK and it'll log me in as an admin. Once I'm in the system settings menu, I'll click applications. There's no application currently started, so I'll click the blue button app management. Then install update. Once I have the pop-up shown here, it's asking me to browse for a file. I'll plug in the USB that I copied the zip folder to. Once I've plugged in the USB, I'll browse image. Double click to enter the USB memory. And there you see the zip folder that we pulled from the PC. I'll highlight it and then press OK at the bottom left of the screen. Now it shows that file selected. I'll click Proceed. This will update your HMI to be able to support remote target visualization. Once the installation has completed, press OK. And the HMI will reboot itself. Upon startup as a remote target visual, visualizing HMI, a network scan will be performed. If your CODASYS controller doesn't start show up immediately due to power on sequencing, click Scan Network in the top right. Once the network scan is complete, you'll see a list of available controllers on the left side. You can see here I have CPX CEC C1V3. I'll highlight that. Confirm that's the exact controller I want with the details on the right, and then press OK in the bottom right corner. This will establish a connection with my CODASYS controller and pull any available remote target visualization, which you can see it's now showing the RTV test screen we created in our CODASYS project. There's one final, final setting that needs to be confirmed before logging out is that this visualization as a remote target will start up as an automatic start with each power cycle. In order to confirm this, I'll power cycle my HMI. As the HMI is starting up, I'll double tap the screen. You can see a blue banner says tap tap detected, entering system settings, and then default mode. Once I've entered the default mode, you can see three buttons in the top right. System settings is the top one. I'll select system settings. And now I'll log in as my administrator user, admin. Once I'm logged in again to my system settings, I'll click the Applications menu. And now you can see Codasys RTV is set up as an application and Auto Start is enabled. With Codasys RTV set up for Auto Start, I'll return to the menu, scroll down, click Restart, Main OS and confirm, press OK. Now the HMI will restart one more time. It will establish a connection with the Codasys controller. 
and it will auto-start with the RTV test screen shown here. Thank you for your time.